Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here, Smart Business Moves. Got Liz in her car. Oh, dear God, for any of you guys that were with us last time, Liz was in her car. You remember what happened. The uh, temperature was like 100 and something degrees. It was like being in Scottsdale, but she's up on Washington coast. Don't know how that happened. Her phone got so hot, it, 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 it turned off. We thought she had a heat stroke. We were trying to figure out how to call 911. It was tragic. What's the temperature today, Liz? It's cool. It's like 75. Oh, we don't have anything to worry about. Just no, it's, crack the it's window actually a little beautiful bit. out here. You'll be fine. Yeah. And we've got our friend Heather Canning. Hey, Heather, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? Well, we're doing awesome. Doing awesome. Um, Heather, I want to know if anybody guessed Heather. Let's go over the let's go over the clues again. See if we can piece all this together. What were they, Liz? Well, I'm in my car, so I don't have them all, but I'll tell you what I remember. Um, I said that she had COVID. This um, guest had COVID. I said that this guest did uh, had a business of $1.4 million. I said that this guest had something in common with the largest planet in the solar system. Ooh. I said, what else did I say, Tom? I don't know. The planet one was the one that I remember because I thought that was really a good clue. Well, that's because that was your clue. <laughs> was my clue. Well, maybe that's why I liked it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, dude, would you mind talking about COVID a little bit? I mean, I don't know too many people who have it or have had it. Wait, what's it like, Heather? Um, it sucks. So um, I have. I'm coming to you from my bed. And I have been locked away like Rapunzel in the castle for two weeks. Um, it'll be two weeks on Monday. My family won't let me leave the room. Nobody wants to get it. Um, the first three days was pretty rough. It was like two and a half that I was really sick, um, flu-like symptoms. And then I woke up on Wednesday and I took some Excedrin. I took a shower and I felt wonderful. So I'm like, okay, it's all over with, right? Um, no. Came last Friday morning, I woke up and I discovered I had no um, smell or taste. So I've been living with that for the last week. So that's been pretty bad. Um, I did not know anybody personally that had COVID. Oh, my cousin, my cousin on the other coast of Florida. And my girlfriend, Nina, um, came to visit me last week. And she stayed in the house with me. And she has contracted it as well. Yeah. Yeah. But her symptoms are rather mild, aren't they? She has Very. no symptoms. She's actually tested again today and again yesterday. Um, she's tested four times and she's gotten her results back. And I have not actually gotten my results back. It has been it's seven just, days. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. I guess, I mean, there's a lot of people. I mean, it's 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 rampant in, in, in Florida, I guess. It's. I mean, we, we know the whole, you know, SARS, you know, COVID-2 virus in, 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 in COVID is an unprecedented event. And, you know, it's getting, it's getting worse every day in Florida, correct? Yeah, our numbers are spiking pretty much every day. Um, the tests, obviously, I'm not the only one that can't get results back. So that's a really big problem here. There's wow. still, so we, have a, we have a state shortage of tests, actually. Um, I try to get my kids tested, and the pediatrician said that there's a wait list for tests. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Well, and I mean, we're, we're assuming that you have COVID because Nina has COVID, because you have all the symptoms, especially the symptom of no taste and no smell. Yeah. Yeah, if that you don't was, have it, you missed a pleasure. really good opportunity. You should have it. <laughs> I really am in, I'm believing that if my test did come back and I check on my phone on the app like 20 times a day, it's really bad. Um, if it came back negative, I probably would still do the same thing in quarantine because they're saying that you really can't rely on the test and the outcome. Um, and plus my husband's sleeping on the couch for the last two weeks. <laughs> No. I didn't know I that part. Back. Otherwise, he slept on the couch for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even in trouble. Nope. 
poor bird. I'm sleeping like a baby because he snores. So do I. But um, I sleep very well at night. He unfortunately does not. Uh, that's the same thing at our house. I can sleep through anything, but poor Tim, he, he struggles a little bit more. He's got to be in our bed. I have to be there. It's It's tough on him. Yeah. Well, hey, Tom, do you have next week's schedule? I, I do, but uh, we've got people jumping on the uh, on the Facebook Live here. You guys need to be working up your questions and start dropping them in chat because we're going to uh, be doing on the spot here in a minute, and it's a lot more fun if we have questions. <laughs> so much more fun. <laughs> um, I hey, have Angela, to hey, Sarah. You would like me to fill some airtime. What you got uh, going on? So our operations manager is one of the best operations managers in the biz. And um, as of last week, she moved out of state. So on top of having COVID, now we've lost our operations manager out um, at the office. She is working with my clues. That was one of the clues. Yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That. Not a lot of people know that she left. She hasn't left. She just left the state and moved to Georgia. And now she's working remotely. And they've done a fabulous job the last almost two weeks running the business without me. Yeah. So I Tom can't Christina, believe Sarah Tom didn't Christina, guess it was you. So, so Thomas Dean is living outside of Atlanta now. Is she, is she, has she moved yet? She did. She moved last uh, Monday night. Okay. Has she started to work yet f remotely? Yes. Okay. And it's okay. doing a fabulous job. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. We're a little freaked out because I did hug her goodbye. We did, you know, not social distance. And we hugged each other. We seem to be no symptoms, so we're lucky. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Fingers crossed, Heather. Okay, guys, Angela, Sarah, drop us some questions while we uh, go over uh, next week's schedule. And, and I have been pushing for not doing the Friday on the spot. If we don't get enough people and enough questions, I'm like, a four-day week would be fine. I always have this appointment on Fridays that causes me a little bit of grief. And so that's why I'm sitting in my car half the time. So, you know, not going to break my heart, y'all, if, if you don't love on the spot. <laughs> I think that people like on the spot. I think it's a bad time. Friday at five. It's been a long work week. Maybe yeah. we just move. Everybody it, maybe, in the booze. Maybe we move it to Thursday and go to a four day work week. You guys OK with that? I'm OK with I that. Am. It's a beaut. Can, can we like start now and we'll just come back and do it next <laughs> <laughs> just kidding just kidding it is a really beautiful day out there and the fish are biting and it's just anyway well how about we do this we'll go for as long as we have questions up until six o'clock okay deal, deal. okay hey, Kelly, I'm, good to see you, Kelly. I'm not going anywhere so i'm here <laughs> i have missed kelly so I don't think there's very many people on the call. I can probably say this. So haven't you missed Kelly, Heather? Yeah. So Kelly's in our um, MMA growth group. And we had for a month, we la allowed all of the growth group to participate in success group just to see what it was like. And now she's back in growth. And we're, <laughs> it was for the month of June. And so for July, we're not seeing her as much as we used to. And I miss her. So I hope everything's good, Kelly. We have, we've had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with Kelly when she did foundations and came to Charleston and found out that she is really an expert on trees. I know there's a more sophisticated word for it than that, but we wound up going on a road trip, going through some of the plantations so she could see all the different types of Arborage that was was out there and the uh, grasses that grew in uh, the marsh and it was it was it was and Liz you were with us that was fun wasn't it Yeah it was Is it called an arborist uh, Maybe. The actual science is I want to say arbitrage but that's not right but I, I you know I don't know it probably has the word arbor in it 
And we're going to go with Arbery because I Arbery. like that. Arbery. That's not the real word. I just like it. Arbergeddon. Oh, Leslie's liking our lineup next week. We got a lot walk? of questions too, Tom. We better get to it. You want to walk us through uh, what we're doing next week, Liz, or you want me to do it? If you could, Tom, I can't really see the you screen. You can see because you're on the phone. and you're. Is the temperature okay? It's beautiful. Okay. If you start getting a little warm, let us know. We'll, you know. Can we have like a sign or something. You got to like pull your ear low. Yeah. So <laughs> you'll notice when I start dripping, last time the 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 sweat was dripping. So <laughs> go to Google, go to Google and send me a pin as to where you are. So if your phone goes dead, <laughs> we'll know where to sell send EMS. I'm fine, it's beautiful here. Okay. <laughs> okay. On Monday, Maria Dorian is going to be with us. And if you guys don't know Maria, Maria is 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 a talent. She uh does a lot of things. Uh, she helps us with 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 Made Central. Is a big part of that team. Uh, she's actually uh, done a lot of work for us in Capital Keepers here since COVID came up. But she also owns and operates a business called um, Oh goodness, I had it right on the tip of my tongue. Task away. Thank you. I'm sorry, Maria. Task away. It's a VA service and. Uh, she basically hooks up uh, primarily cleaning businesses with uh, virtual assistants to uh, help with uh, tasks that uh, they can't or don't want to handle themselves. So she's going to tell us how that business works and uh, the main reasons why people hire VA services. RJ Patel is going to be joining us on Tuesday. He's a former president of ARX. He's still very actively involved with, uh, with that organization, runs a really... Uh, strong uh, cleaning service in Atlanta. And he's going to be uh, telling us how to do the right thing at the right, do the right thing and the right things will happen for you. That sounds interesting. Liz, do you have some ideas to what direction we're going to go with that? I do. So um, one of the things that uh, RJ is fairly well known for is his mindset of um, abundance and doing for other people always comes back to you in a much bigger way. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Thank you, Leslie. And the official term is tree hugger. Thank you, <laughs> um, deal day is Wednesday. Um, we're going to make that the introduction of deal day. We're going to offer a couple of deals. We aren't going to, you know, just rifle through and do, do 10 the way that we will be doing it on a, on a normal basis, but we're going to do, do a couple of deals to, to give uh, everybody an idea how it works. We're going to slow down and take a little bit of time and explain how it's going to be working moving forward. We've got a lot of vendors. We've got vendors who have signed up, but they needed more time than, between now and Wednesday to get ready. So I so said, we'll tell you what, we'll go with just a couple this coming up Wednesday, and then we'll launch, you know, our, our formal launch, our hard launch. We'll call this a soft launch this Wednesday and two Wednesdays from then, which I guess will be uh, the 29th, maybe. Yeah, the 29th yeah. will be our formal launch. Um, Part of what we're going to be doing Wednesday, quite honestly, is a little bit of a dress rehearsal as well. A lot of the vendors who are interested in this but want to get a better idea as to how to put their videos together and how to put together a deal and a call to action and make it easy for us to buy are going to be there as well. So if all you guys can be there on Wednesday as well and make it look really good and ask a bunch of questions, it'll make us look better. And that means more vendors will want to be part of deal day and we'll get more deals. And we were talking before we came on, and Heather says, hey, that sounds like Black Friday. So that's, that's our hope. Yeah, if we if we do it right, but, but we need your help. So come come out in, uh, next Wednesday and be there with that. Sharon Cowan. Sharon Cowan is truly an expert in a lot of uh, a lot of yes. aspects and dimensions of, of the cleaning business. She's a consultant, has been at this for for a while, have a lot of respect for Sharon, and she's going to be sharing with us the importance of financial health during unprecedented times. 
And unprecedented is lowercase, but it should probably be all uppercase, right? I'm not sure. We'll have yeah. to get that fixed because it these could are be, that's for darn sure. These are unprecedented times, as we've established previously. I've never met Sharon, but she is an hour north of me, and we've talked about having lunch so many oh. times. You, well, you, after you watch the show next week, I guarantee you will make an effort to meet up with her, Heather. Yeah. I'll be there. She'll have yeah. you doing commercial cleaning before you know it. She's amazing. You're going to be blown away. Truly. Truly. Yeah. And Friday was our normal on-the-spot time. So I guess for the moment, that's where it is. Maybe we'll go to a four-day work week here before long. But as it stands now, that's uh, what we got lined up for next Friday. I also have a real quick question. If you guys could drop in the comments, is there anybody that you would like us to get as a guest? Somebody that you're interested in hearing about, hearing their story, you, you just love some of the stuff that they do or that they know or talk about or somebody that you would like to see that you want more information about um like i was talking about i'd love to get a banker on here wouldn't that be awesome and i would also love to get like a physician on here that could talk to us about covid in a bigger better way so but if you guys have any ideas of who you'd like to see either profession or individuals, please drop it in chat and I'll do my best. We got a question. We, we, got, several, we got several actually. Sarah wants to know, how do we keep, uh, how do you keep your quality consistent without a field manager? How do you hold your employees accountable? Okay, okay well, I'm gonna, before you get started, Tom, I'm going to have to blast poor Heather, I mean, poor Sarah, and I'm going to spill a little bit of beans here, but Sarah's in the Success Mastermind group, and today she asked this question, and apparently our answers weren't good enough, because <laughs> here we are. We got we to gotta give more. All right, all right, well, Sarah. At the very least, it wasn't the answer in. she was looking for. <laughs> yeah. Well, she wants to ask us again. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> you want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So when you say field manager, Sarah, I assume you're talking about somebody that would actually be going behind the teams and doing do physical inspections of the homes that they're cleaning. Um, if that's what you mean, uh, there's other ways that, that that you can can enforce quality. Quality surveys are are, are one way of, of doing it. Uh, quality driven is a really awesome piece of software, and I know a lot of you guys use that. Uh, uh, other software packages, Made Central, and I think some others have uh, you know survey systems built into those. So you get the surveys, you uh, provide feedback to your, your cleaning teams and turn their scores. If you get uh, what you call non-conforming issues where surveys are coming back and they're bad you know it gives you an opportunity to go back to your client and figure out what you need to do to make it right as well as create accountability with your teams as to uh you know doing taking corrective action and doing what they need to do to reduce the chance of that happening in the future that's amazing okay, tom <laughs> i'm giving you if i had two hands tom i would give you double thumbs up because that was so good I timed that out. I would like you slow did. down, picked up. Yep. Yeah, thank you. I've been that, practicing. That was amazing. Both. I've been practicing today. Good job, Tom. <laughs> so for everybody who is like not here on a regular basis, listening to two of you guys on who goes first and who goes last is hysterical. <laughs> hysterical. We will mess we're it like up. We're like siblings. We, we are. Will, we will mess it up before we're done. Yeah. I'm we will mess it up. It gets harder. <laughs> yeah. You ready? <laughs> You ready to go, Heather? Sure. Okay, go. So I talk really, really fast, so I will never take up all my one minute. So, Tom, you can suck up a lot of my time. Um, I will totally uh, agree with what Tom said. We have been in business for 10 years, and we've never had a field manager. Um, love the surveys and getting people's um, opinions as to how the cleaning's going. Um, I've also found, though, about 50% of the people will not fill out the survey, whether they will only fill it out if they're happy or whether they will only fill it out if they're not happy. So getting on the phone, calling them, but more importantly, tying their quality into their pay is really big for us. We started that this year. That that 
has been an absolute game changer and our quality has come up tremendously. I'm done. Well, she Very is fast. Good. Liz, do you need those 17 seconds? <laughs> I might. A minute, a minute enough. Okay. You ready? Yep. Okay, so um, we also do use the quality scores. Um, one of the things that we do that's just a little bit different is every morning our all of our team coaches get together and um, and maybe not physically all get together because of COVID right now, um, but get together and do a, a couple of things. The first thing they do is we look at everybody's score. Um, their quality score. Every client that's on the schedule for the day, we look at their score. And each team coach has to tell us how they did with watching quality scores the day before and what they're going to do for every individual client that is on their schedule that day, what tasks they're going to take. And then the next day, give their, um, um, that's it. <laughs> Can I go back 17 seconds? Uh, uh, uh. Do, do, you want, do you want Heather 17 seconds? I mean, for some. No, I just want to um, put on into what Liz said about um, the quality scores and making sure, like, if you do have, like, quality driven or it's on your software, to make sure your people have access to that because letting them see them on a daily basis is so important. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. So Heather, I'll tell you a secret. The best thing about being the guest is Go you can there. really have as much time as you want. Yeah. There's no, there's no rules for the guest. You can do, you can yeah. just, you can go crazy. Love it. Liz won't let me get away with that. No. Right? You, no. You, you have to reel you in. I get it. Okay. <laughs> um, Angela has a question for us. Um, I went first. That means you get to go first next, Heather. Are you ready? I am. What's the question? Your oh, team at the office. Does it meet at the office? Do your teams meet at the office every day? Okay, sorry, I didn't see that there. Um, we do. We actually work in teams of one, two, and three. Um, back in the day, I will blow your mind. We had a team of five, and then we went down to four. Then we went down to three, two, one. Um, so we do company cars. Um, we are paid hourly, so we all meet at the office. During COVID, we are doing staggered starts. We don't let more than one team in the warehouse at a time. We actually have um, chopped it up that half of the staff have to unload and load in the evening, and the other half have to unload and load in the morning to make sure that we're not you know, jumping up on each other in the morning. It's very sad. We love to eat. We love to be together. We love to party in the morning. Can't do it anymore, and it's very sad, but hopefully soon. Very good. Very Liz? Yep. All right. So we all meet at the at the office because we carpool, but uh, we don't come into the office. The team coaches come into the office. And then if somebody has a meeting, um, I do one on ones with people with the team members on Mondays and Tuesdays, Monday and Tuesday mornings. So those individual people will come into my office. And we'll sit down and have a chat. Um, otherwise, everybody waits outside um, in the nice weather. No problem. They hang out. They talk. They go. We have a, like a, a little covered shelter outside where people will stand and they'll smoke or drink, talk, chat. So they're still getting together in the morning. And then they um, will get in their cars when it's time to leave. And they'll all head out from there. Just the team coaches actually come inside, though. And hi, Angela. Tell Oscar I said hi. I got that in under time. <laughs> Very good. <sighs> yes, our team meet at the office as well. We primarily do two-person teams. We um, have experimented from time to time with doing solos and allowing them to leave just from their home and go clean a couple of jobs. The situation we still do. We believe as time goes on, we might do more of that and actually go into something that would look more like a hybrid model. But the largest part of our residential cleaning, all those teams meet at the office every morning. Like Liz, we uh, stay out in the parking lot. We aren't coming into the actual building anymore. We have our team meetings outside and uh, 
along with all the other PPE, you know, safety precautions, uh, all of that we're, we're, we're doing obviously because of COVID. But um, yeah, we, we still meet at the office every day. I mean, for us, building that culture and having people come into the office has been really important for us. Do you see I sneaked in some more minutes there? Oh, yeah. come on. You, you're, you know, you know, you are a guest. They're all so. yours. Yeah. Okay, so Liz, it's your turn to go first. I'm so impressed you're remembering this every time, Tom. Good job. Actually, I'm cheating. I'm writing it down. <laughs> it's okay. It works. Um, okay, Paula, um, we have different locations. So at my Olympia location, which is what I'm going to talk about, we do pay hourly. And we also have some people, I don't even think Tom knows this yet. Uh, we do have some people on a fixed pay. I originally heard this in foundations. One of our students um, up in Seattle was paying his technicians guaranteed pay. And so I have started doing this with my trainers. Oh, who is that that's doing that, Tom? Marcelo does that with four C. Yes, that's right. Marcelo Seattle. does that. Anyway, I love this idea. I heard it again about training. And so I've started, um, I put all of my trainers on fixed pay. They earn $100 a day. And um, so they earn $500 a week guaranteed pay. Whew. Close. We pay primarily pay commission. Uh, new people while they're trainees they're making hourly but when they get done with their 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 period as being a trainee and and or promoted to a position that we call teammate we have trainees teammates captains are kind of like the first three levels i guess really we have a uh uh a temporary captain but any once you're out of the, being uh come out of the role of, of of trainee you are working commission and you know, we guarantee a minimum wage. We've got different branches and, and, and some of the, the nuances of, of are, are a little bit different, but it's all commission based, but we guarantee them a base hourly rate and create it in a way that the plan in a way where they're making more off the commission than what they would ever make <coughs> of their hourly pay. And that's the way we do it. Um, we pay hourly. We pay for the moment they clock in in the morning and come into the office um, until they leave. Um, we pay straight hourly through drive time and everything. About a year and a half ago, we did uh, restructure our pay that we give raises every six months. Um, after the first 30 days, they get a raise after the first 90 days, and then every six months going forward. Um, and that really tied into our quality, and that has really made a difference um, in our company as well. That's it. Very good. And I know you got that idea from Foundations, Heather. Foundations? What's that? I've never heard of the thing. You're supposed to say, and I couldn't have done it without foundation. I could well, not have done it. I spent two weeks with you guys, and Liz helped me come up with that, and it has been amazing. And actually, I, I do have to say, Heather, I'm not sure I ever told you this, but that was really a great time for me spending. I'm glad that you stayed that extra week. That was awesome. It me really too. was. Me and too. like that. Like that couple of walks we had, that one long walk on the beach, that was awesome. I'm going to go anyway, back again. I know this isn't the right format. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Let's reminisce. <laughs> no, it's Good cool. Times. Good times. Yeah. Can we talk about foundations a little bit? I mean, we're not oh, really. No. 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 You're going to get you're gonna, you're gonna get emotional, maybe tear up a little bit. No, people, we got a lot of questions. If we have questions, that, if we run out of questions, we can talk about it. Okay, let me go. Bang, it's my turn. How long have we been in business? Where am I see myself five years from now? Have I considered franchising? Uh, Castle Keepers, I've been a CEO of Castle Keepers since the beginning of 1997. So I'll let somebody else do the math on that. It's been 20 some odd years. Where do I see myself five years from now? Pretty much doing what I'm doing now. Um, We've got uh, several branches, primarily in the southeast. I think moving forward, we might open more branches, but it would be 
in the Southeast. They're company owned and we're not franchising. Have we ever considered franchising? You know, we've, we've had the discussions before we looked at it, um, have not seriously pursued it and don't really see us doing it at that point in time. Um, also see ourselves continuing to do uh, coaching, have a lot of fun with that, have fun developing Made Central. We've got a lot of, I mean, we're going to do a lot of awesome stuff with Made Central over the next five years and doing our online training like PHC. Good job, Tom. You got a lot in there. That was good. You ready, uh, Heather? Yes. We have been in business for 10 years. Um, in January, 10 years. And where do I see myself in five years? I really don't know. I'm all about the here and now. But I will tell you that I absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, love doing what I do. I love going to work every day. So it's killing me not to go to work. Um, people have asked me if I'm going to franchise um, my business. And I did think about it for a few years. I don't think that's really the avenue that I want to go in. I do want to get to be about two, 2.5 million in my one branch. And then I think I'd like to open up branches branches um, in other areas of Florida to really be able to mimic what we've started here in Jupiter. And foundations, I have 19 seconds left. So I want to talk about foundations. I went to foundations the first time four years ago, and it's absolutely awesome. So if anybody wants to hit me up later, totally talk to me later. <laughs> All Shame. right, you guys. She is a guest. I know, she's a guest. Otherwise, I'd be giving her grief, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you ready, Liz? Okay. Um, so I have been in business 27 years. Um, in five years, I expect to still be doing um, American Made, be, but it'll probably be operating a little bit differently than it's operating now. And I, I plan to have a little bit different office, office structure and to be moving into different areas. Um, and also I plan to be doing more group coaching. Um, you know, uh, uh, the MMA groups are kind of really amazing. I really didn't know that they're going to be as good as they are. So I'll probably, I, I plan on doing more of that and finding a way to scale that. I haven't, I haven't prepped that nut yet. Um, Renee O'Brien actually contacted me about franchising, American made a few years back and I gave it a good thought and I decided against it. You know, we've gotten this time thing down so far. So good today, right? Like we almost don't even need this timer. <laughs> yes, we do. I know we do. <laughs> okay. So, I think this is our next question. Angela needs some help um, planning to pay employees by commission. What do we suggest? Um, you're uh, first up this time, Heather. Unfortunately, I cannot offer any suggestions because I have never paid commission. I have talked to many people about it, and here I am talking. Um, for me, the reason why we've chosen not to go commission is because I like to keep things very easy. I'm kind of lazy that way, um, but I don't want to mess with my people's money. My people need to be able to see across the board how much they're making, and I just feel that even if I'm paying them a higher rate, it's easier for them. So that's why we've chosen not to do commission. Oh, pretty good. You ready, Liz? Okay. Yep, I'm ready. Uh, okay, so I know Tom is going to talk to you about commission in a, a deep way. Um, and he'll probably tell you about his presentation for the Maid Service Summit. So make sure that you watch that, Angela, because his presentation is all about this. Um, but uh, some things that I want to add on to what he's going to tell you or say in advance is um, one of the things that you really need to do if you're paying commission is the people need to be able to see how their pay um, turns into an hourly rate because they only think in hours even when it's commission and let them see that their productivity means they make more money per hour. So if you can show them that, 
it can win. It can work. Also, after their first paycheck and their third paycheck, have a sit down with them and walk them through how they got paid. Big win right there. Nice. Very good. <laughs> we pay commission. So I guess for starters, you need to have a system in place to actually do the calculations because you have to basically determine everybody's pay on a job by job basis and a percentage of the revenue generated. So doing that by paper and pencil, it's a lot more complicated than, than doing hourly pay. Um, I've seen people do it with spreadsheets or some software platforms out there that does it, you know, made central makes it really easy for you, but I believe there's others out there that do commission pay as well. So, you know, I would, I would look into that. One of the big questions that comes up is, what do I make the percentages? How much of a rev share do, do I do? And that depends upon a lot of factors. And if you want to know the best answer to how to determine that, I'm dropping a link in the chat right here because I've got an awesome presentation in the May Service Success Summit that's coming up at the end of the month that explains how to calculate <laughs> the percentages. You could not have gotten any closer and still made it. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Da -da -da. Got a lot of comments here. What is, what's this comment say? Micro Dirty Jobs, he was talking about skilled labor on Fox News the other day. Okay. I don't think that's a question. Sounds like a comment. It is. Well, here's one. Trisha Light, question mark? What, who wants I think that we she love Trisha Lake. Here. Where is she? That's the question. Where is Trisha Lake? It is, it is Friday afternoon. What do you think? She's on the lake. Yeah. On the lake. Um, I think though that Sarah might be suggesting to have her on. Well, what do you think, Liz? Um, I think that's oh. an awesome idea. I actually um I'm pretty sure I already asked her, you guys, and I think she said she was busy. Oh, yeah. I'll hit her up again. I'll tell her that she was specifically requested. Yeah. Put and a also, if you, don't forget, if you guys have any other ideas, drop them in the chat. Um, how about, oh, we have, we have one from Kelly. Sorry. We skipped over Greg. We have to go back to Greg's. Oh, it didn't have a question mark, so I didn't see it as a question, but I've got it. It is. I'd love to hear from someone who does well with Facebook marketing. Liz, your first one up. Okay, I'm glad I'm first up. I can get it out of the way. So I do not do well with Facebook marketing, Greg, so you don't want to hear from me. But I can tell you some people who you do want to watch because they do really well with Facebook marketing. One is Trisha Lake, who we were just talking about. Um, she does phenomenally well with her Facebook marketing. And another one is um, Stephanie Nesset with Absolutely Clean out of, ooh, where is she, Iowa? Mm, I believe so. I, I think it's Iowa. So. Um, anyway, she also does an amazing job uh, marketing through Facebook. I, not so much, Greg, but watch. I got a plan. I'm going to be doing better over the next month. We use Facebook probably more for recruiting than we do for, uh, you know, getting new clients. Uh, the people that, that, that Liz mentioned, they're really awesome with Facebook in terms of content and getting engagement and getting a lot of, you know, the community involved. They got a lot of people that, that, that like their Facebook page. People like Matt Ricketts, he does Facebook marketing as well, but basically he works through an agency and they attack it more from the, the, the pixel standpoint where if somebody goes to your website and then goes to, and then it puts a pixel on, on, on their browser. So then they go to Facebook and then ads for your cleaning company show up, you know, on, on Facebook. So there's a couple of different varieties of that, depending if you're trying to build a community and get a lot of likes, or if you want to do the whole pixel paid advertising thing. Um, you ready, Heather? Yes. So 
I'm going to address Facebook in two different ways um, because, Greg, I don't know you, but I'd like to get to know you. Um, but sometimes people feel like posting Facebook posts in Boost is marketing on Facebook. Um, so I will address the posting of um, Facebook. We do do it daily. We do not advertise on Facebook in our daily post. It's more about getting people engaged about recipes or fun stuff or maybe tips on how to clean your home. Um, I do not boost posts. I've never paid for a boosted post. Um, we do also run Facebook ads. Um, I do have a marketing team and our ad spend is $300 a month on our Facebook ads and it does get us um, a, a lot on our return for our investment. Um, and I also pay to have that done as well. I don't do it myself because Facebook is ever changing. And if you're not keeping up with all the changes, kind of aren't able to run ads if you're not knowledgeable in that field. You hey, almost Heather, make your... a note. Make a note, Heather, to um, maybe maybe do a presentation about that in MMA. Okay. Oh, I do not know if I have enough information to do that, but I will make a note. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least you can get us started. I do like posting. I've actually just turned over my Facebook post and my Instagram. You want to know a secret? To yeah. a seventeen-year-old girl. Nice. That's that's yeah. smart. Yeah. She's struggling with Facebook, obviously, because it's for us older folk. Um, but she's been doing our Instagram and she's been doing a great job. So I turned over the Facebook to her as well. Hey, Denise. Hey, you guys, I can't see all the comments. So for all the people that I'm not commenting to, I can't. Oh, I got you, Liz. She wants me to get Mike Rowe on, on our show, right? Whoa. Oh. Yeah, that'd be cool. Liz. Yeah. Can you do All that? All righty. I got you. That makes sense. Uh, hey, okay. Hey, I don't know why he wouldn't. That would be awesome. Yeah. I love uh, that. Kelly wants to know where we get our trigger sprayers. I'm not going to. Uh, I'll just help her out and answer the question. It's a, the company that makes them is called impact. Um, they're a manufacturer. They work through a lot of local distributors. I would just, uh, you know, you know what you, you know what you want. I would just go to your local distributor and say, Hey, impact makes these. Can you get them for me? And that would be the way to go there. A lot of distributors um, are not able to fill orders at this time due to the pandemic. So, but try. I think we're out of questions at the moment. All righty. Okay, Tom, I said if we ran out of questions, you could talk about foundations. But y'all, this is on you. This is not on me. Okay. Well, Heather, how many... How many times you've done you've done foundations? I mean, you've spent like three weeks with us, three weeks worth of foundations, right? Correct. I've been twice. Okay, but two weeks one time. We we did something, I guess, unique during Foundations Ten, which I guess was a year when, and a half. Ago. Yeah, where we did two weeks back to back, and it sounded like a great idea when we were planning it, but. Two weeks is a heck of a lot of foundations, but uh, um, you get to know people really well when everybody's like living in the same house for a couple of weeks, right? I think that was one of my biggest takeaways. I mean, there were so many takeaways, um, especially my first foundations. Um, if anybody's ever seen Big Brother, I always refer to it as Big Brother, um, but for your business that we're eating, sleeping, and whatever everything is your business from the moment you wake up until the moment you go to sleep pooing? and like, what Poo you said did you say pooing i no, i didn't say that no um but you eat no, sleep. Okay. nobody's watching you're good. Go ahead. no listen and you know what even when the coaches leave and the class is over that's when you form the relationships with everybody else in the house and like those people that i went to foundations with i can call them up in a moment's notice right now and say hey i need help with this or what do you think about that and for me building those relationships was amazing yeah well i i i know i i said that you guys really shouldn't talk about foundations but here i am going to comment too um 
No, it, it is true. I mean, uh, people don't really understand that there's a much bigger difference between spending time together and being uh, <clears throat> together 24 seven, that that's a completely different experience than just getting information um, a, from a program. It's not the same thing. I think one of the things that was awesome about foundations too, or is awesome about foundations is that um, for every class, we have a workshop, class workshop. So here's the class. Now implement something from this class that matches your business, what your <coughs> business needs. I do want to say one thing about foundations too, that um, a, a lot of people don't know. Foundations is really not for you. If you don't know who you are and what you want, you don't have like an idea for what kind of a company that you want. If you don't have any like strong desires for your company, you're just like, I don't know, I just kind of want to make money and I know how to clean. And so you probably won't love foundations because a lot of foundations is that actually all of foundations is a personalized experience for your company and you. So the answers are about you and your company, what will work for you. One of the first things we do is take your, um, have you take a disc assessment and then we find out all about your company and what you're looking to create. And then our answers are about that. So if you don't know what any of that stuff is, you might struggle. You know what, Liz, I also think that if you are not a doer, Foundations is not for you either. Um, I've seen so many people like just want to think that they can go and get the answers and then not have to go and do the work. And yes, you're going to get all the answers at Foundation, but then you have to do the hard work. You have to go back home and you have to implement all those things into your business. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. That's that's one of the things that you always did really well. And actually, Trisha, right? Trisha's mm -hmm. really good at that as well. So, awesome at that. All awesome. of the people that love foundations are really good at that because they get it. Yeah. Yeah. You and then we've been able to go and scale our businesses after that. When I first went, I was running my business on pen and paper, pen and paper on iCalendar. And we did just under $800,000. I know, right? I like to tell people that for shock value. Um, yeah. And at foundations, like I got onto service autopilot. I mean, that's a huge platform, right? I learned so many things that really was able to just explode our business to years to follow for years to follow. Yeah. Well, well, we're getting down to kind of the top of the hour anyway. A couple of things. And it's Friday, and Tom. It is Friday. It's um, getting warm. PHC program is launched and fully there and functional. We've got, last I checked, somewhere around 250 people that are taking the class. Um, I forget the number. Uh, a smaller number have actually finished it. Um, but there's going to be a lot of people on the job market in a couple of weeks. They're going to have a lot of talent, and they're going to be looking for you know, they're going to be, they're going to be expecting training. They're going to be coming from jobs where they got training and this makes it really easy and it's sustainable. And you just basically it's e-learning and each company gets their own login and you can just sign your people up uh, when it's convenient and then they're on their own to do it, but you can track their progress. And even with things get crazy, you can still train your people with this program. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really having, I'm looking forward to being able to hand pick, cherry pick the people that I want. I know, looking forward to that. Yeah. So I wanted to, I wanted to say one more thing, Tom, I, I haven't talked to you about this before, but, or, and when we're talking about um, the PHC program, we talk a lot about, you know, what's interesting to people, what do they need? Why would they care about this program? One thing that we haven't talked about is, um, so I think that a lot of times uh, cleaning business owners, especially if you, we've been in business for a while, we're like, we know, we know how to do this stuff. You know, this part is easy. The, you know, how to clean part. We know about safety. We know about some of this basic stuff. We don't really need help with this. Well, we had three business owners that did not pass, you guys. They took the, the, the test, the PHC course, and they didn't pass the first time. Now I'm not going to say anybody's name, but it's not really 
so basic and so obvious. It's not a gimme. It's not a course that you take it and you're like, oh, please, I know all of this. You're killing me. It's not like and, that. And, you know, if you if you look at the website, it'll tell you a little more about, you know, what the program's about. But it's not prescriptive. It's not telling you how to clean stuff. It's giving you the whys behind we do the things that we do, the science, the the hygiene, the safety, the stuff that transcends any particular company's cleaning procedures. It's the it's the the why we do what we do and how to do it, you know, properly. It's it's like a, a driver's ed manual as opposed to the owner's manual for a particular car. Your procedures is the owner manual for the car. But this transcends that. This is kind of like the rules of the road for professional house cleaning. Tom, did you see what Leslie said? Because I think she hits on a really, really great point. She has all of her crew taking it right now. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a really big deal that it's all in one place and you don't have to travel. I mean, one of the really hard things about the HCT program, love the HCT program, but really, how are you going to take your whole team? Like in my case, I had to go up to Seattle, which doesn't sound like it's that far away until I need to take, you know, a whole passel of people up there, carpool, how many cars up there, but for the PHC program, from the comfort of our homes, offices, and the price too. I mean, the price is way, way better. Hey, how are your, how are your, um, not to call you out, Leslie, sorry, especially if you're having a bad experience. <laughs> I'm sorry about doing this, but tell me, tell us if you can, how, how is it going? Are your people learning a lot? Are you appreciating the class? Is it good info for you guys? I'll let her have a second so, to answer well, that. I can take you back to uh, cleaning business today. If you haven't subscribed, really easy. Just put your email, first name, last name. Um, got some really good uh, newsletters going out that kind of keeps you up to date. You'll be getting information about uh, deal day. And go to our super secret link here that we've had for a few months. And this is all of our good downloads. And... Greg uh, gave us links yesterday, and I didn't read the email, but I got them in there today. So down here at the bottom, uh, Greg got his two backlinks. That's how. I, so he's giving you information, but he's getting more backlinks to his website to help him, you know, keep his number one spot for for SEO. Uh, so you can get his bonus plan or his SEO for beginners. And I will drop this and. Tom, I don't know if you can see it too. Leslie says she doesn't know how people are doing because she went to Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. Hey, how about Sarah? Um, that she heard that there was a pandemic, the unemployment is ending a week early. I have not heard that. Is that still scheduled uh, to end the the 31st of July? I think technically the way the law is written, 26th is the last day for which they can be doing it. So it's a few days early. Matt right. said that too. Um, got a question here about uh, uh, PHC and for solo cleaners. Absolutely. If you're a cleaning professional, solos, teams, whatever, the the science, the, 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 the chemistry, the hygiene, the safety, you know, surfaces, equipment, you, you, you need to know that regardless of, 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 of team size. I forgot. Liz if, Liz, if you've heard of the HCT program, the PHC program was written by the same people that wrote the HCT program, but just, uh, you know, it's updated stuff, new information, et cetera. So I, I think it's one of the smartest things you could be doing as a solo cleaner. One way to really set yourself apart because you, you will truly have the ability to be a professional house cleaner. And I didn't do a really good job of explaining this up front. Oops. And I didn't even copy it. Right. Forgive me. Oh. Small business moves. SBM 30. You got to have the S. SBM 30. If you put that in the uh, shopping cart at checkout, 
after you get all your discounts for volume purchases and stuff like that, you'll get an extra 30% taken off if you use that code. That's the good news. The bad news is that code expires at the end of the day today, which is like midnight. So you got what about, and that's Eastern time because that's where I am. So you got about six hours to get an extra 30% off if, if you want to do that. And if you aren't sure, just go in there and buy one class and get 30% off and, and experience it for yourself. Or if you want to buy some for your entire team, your entire company, you can get some pretty good discounts if you buy in volume and you have a login and you can sign your people. You can use them for an entire year. That's another thing that's important to know. So you can buy a bunch now and use them over the course of the year. And 70 yeah, bucks. I love what Leslie bucks. said too. Hey, Leslie, I, I got it that you, she had to go and to be able to take the course, she actually had to fly to Texas. Talk about a change in price from doing it to your house, right? And doing it at your house or from your office. But I love what she wrote here that um, she had her trainer do it first just to see if it jived with their company culture. And she found that it, it really did. And I think that that is, she, well, she said it was spot on. I think that's something that a lot of people worry about, that we're going to be teaching something that is going to go against what you do. You're not going to find that at all. When we wrote the program, there were two things. We needed to make sure that cleaning technicians were getting everything that they needed, but we needed to do it from a standpoint that we needed to present it in a way that cleaning business owners would want it to be delivered to their cleaning technicians. So that was kind of the mantra through the whole process. And I think that I think that we got it. And now we got to go because it's three o'clock on a Friday. Yep. Heather, thing. thank you. I hope thank it, you. I hope that you uh, get 100% really quick because I know Bert probably is getting really tired of sleeping on the sofa. And uh, you guys. And I'm glad you got to do it today to break up the monotony of just sitting in your bedroom alone, Heather. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we brought a whole bunch of people to you today. And, and listen, yeah. my husband and I both run the business together, so he can't go to work either. So we both are just kind of like stuck in limbo. Yeah. Oh, gosh. But thankfully, nobody else in the house is sick, so I'm very happy and fortunate for that. Fingers crossed for you. Yes, thank you. All right, y'all. Everybody have an awesome weekend. We'll see you Monday. Maria will be here. Learn about... Uh, VAs and why they might be helpful to you in your business. See you Monday. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. -bye. Bye. Bye,